Hello musicians, welcome to The Music Show. I've niched down, I've followed Neil Patel's advice and I've ended up with three times as much work. But actually, as as music goes and, you know, compartmentalising your output, so because I do several different things, so I write a book, which happens to be a musical, but I write the words and I've separated all the wordy stuff that I do and all the music stuff that I do. Um, because niching down does pay off. I promise you it pays off. So, you know, I was thinking about if you were a, a, a jobbing muse, muso, you know, somebody who does a range of commissioned music pieces for various things, you could niche down even more. So you could have your sci-fi range and and then you could market that separately to your horror range I you know I don't know or or perhaps your jingles or rather than having them all under one sort of umbrella do you see what I mean that's if you were struggling and you really needed to niche down or you or you want to try it it really does work my you know my visits to all to the blogs and everything have, have tripled actually in the last sort of two or three weeks however long it is that I've been doing it so I am really pleased about that but you will end up doing more work I mean it's very labour intensive to set up but once you get going it's all right but I mean we know as musicians do we not that the work is in the marketing not in the the actual recording um so you know that's I think that's just the way of the world isn't it nowadays so anyway I wanted to just mention how fabulous it is that YouTube, and I've slagged YouTube off a lot, but it's fabulous that they will store all your stuff for free for, I mean, my stuff's been on there since I think about, well, about 10 years. No, probably longer, actually. Um, about 2011, I think. So, yeah, pretty pretty long time, isn't it? That's when I first started making videos and, you know, I'd graduated from uni. Um, I did a master's in film and I was really into doing my film. I'm sort of getting a bit back into that now that I'm making animations. But, of course, it's the music as well. And for a musician, to get your music played... You know, even if it's crap, <laughs> if so, if they play six seconds of it, you'll get royalties. So, you know, I mean, that's what I've done over the last sort of years, the, a couple of years. I'm actually starting to take stuff off now that is really badly produced because there's loads of it. I mean, I just put everything up because I wanted it. I didn't want anyone stealing it. I was using little clips for things that I was doing, shorts and stuff like that. I didn't want it copied and me not to get paid. So um, I just I wouldn't really worry too much about the production. It was more about the content just being in a system whereby if anybody sampled it, I'd get paid. And because I was doing ringtones, I did a thousand ringtones, I think, and I was really concerned about that. Um, anyway, there's loads of things now, and I just think, oh, I can't have that up now that I'm, you know, the, the, my career's going quite well. It's time to take stuff down because it looks bad upon one. So, um, but the other thing I wanted to talk about was this wonderful RSS feed. So, with, with an RSS feed, you can now basically it's a feed that contains everything you know and and I, I believe you can have an rss feed on um, soundcloud and you can have it on podcasts um there's lots of different things where you would have rss feeds and you can upload your rss feed now to, to youtube so you just go along and you you create a podcast and you put in your url of your feed and all of your items so i had about two thousand podcasts and they all uploaded on on this feed. So I didn't have, really have to do anything. Um, you know, I just had to press some buttons, basically. I mean, a couple of them I had to go through all, the, you know, about a thousand podcasts to unprivatize them. That was the only thing I had to do, which was a bit of a pain in the neck. Now, I don't make music on my podcasts anymore. Um, but RSS feeds, you know, as I say, your podcast may well have music on it and there's quite a, there are quite a few podcasts that allow music so if you've got that you can up 
upload it as a podcast on, on an RSS feed to YouTube. And then I was thinking, oh, what if I suddenly get closed down because Spreaker have closed me down twi- three times, I think, because um, my, my uh, ringtones went viral and they were suspicious that I was using, um, you know, some means or other. And another company, Acast, closed me down but they were very kind about it and they, they understood that I hadn't done anything, but they didn't know where all the likes were coming from. They were coming from India um, and they were probably being stripped and copied, no doubt, um, no doubt about it, but I didn't really mind because I was getting paid. Well, of course, ACAST did mind because they couldn't figure out where the um, adverts were going and that was really bad for their business. They needed to be able to tell their clients, you know, where the adverts were being aired do you see what I'm saying so anyway I was thinking oh that if I suddenly get closed down though the RSS feed will be defunct it will be no more but I've just found out guys that the RSS feed creates videos from all your audios and they are a separate entity and they are now stored separately on YouTube so even if the RSS feed was defuncted I don't know what the past tense of defunct is <laughs> is it even a verb I don't know oh, it's been a very long day um uh, they the videos will still be up there that's what I've read so you know I'm taking it as gospel that's what um they they've said on their sort of help things your videos will always be there now because they've become a video and I think it must be right because I'd inadvertently uploaded about 4,000 videos. I didn't even know they were being uploaded um, a couple of years ago. And then I was closed down and I thought I'd lost 4,000 podcasts. But they're all on one of my YouTube sites. The, the videos are all there. Of course, they're not videos. They're, they're Well, they are. They create a video file from your audio file. So it becomes a different type of file. So although the RSS feed is updating all the time, they are actually turning your updated um, uh, videos into... uh, Sorry, audios into a video. So, I mean, I I suppose I could experiment and go and try and delete one from the RSS feed and and see if it's still there. But that's what I've read. They said if you're, you know, if if you get rid of the RSS feed, the videos will still be there. So I was just thinking about how I pay a lot of money for my Vimeo channels because I've got, I've just set up two, um, well, I've got the Academy of Arts, which is a really nice Vimeo channel for arts and music. But it's it's really for intermediate and advanced um, artists and performers. And um, I've just put up an Ed Sheeran thing, which was actually very easy. But the younger person's... um, uh, TV show is for Suzuki players only, cello and piano. So I've just put up Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Um, so I was just thinking about how expensive it is to have, you know, to have all my stuff on there, how much that costs a year. It was about £200 approximately um, for a year. So, you know, that's looming. I've got to pay that again. It's quite a lot of money. I have made that back on subscriptions, I must say, which is encouraging, of course. But it doesn't, you know, you want to see profit if you're putting loads of work in. Also, you can't automate anything. So they don't take automated RSS feeds yet. I mean, I'm sure they maybe will do because YouTube have done that. And I'll tell you what, since all my podcasts have gone on YouTube, my podcast hits have rocketed, absolutely rocketed. So it's really, really helpful. And also my views on on YouTube have, you know, 20,000 hits in in a month, in the last 28 days. Well, that's a lot for books. It's just books, you know, there's no visuals at all. So if you think about it, that's an awful lot. And piano lessons and um, cello lessons as well. Um, but that's a whole lot of work, isn't it? That's a whole lot of uh, stuff to have up. But f- expecting people to go to YouTube and not be able to watch anything. You know, people go to YouTube usually to watch something, not to listen to something. So I wasn't, you know, I wasn't that hopeful about doing that. But this idea that, you know... Oh, also, the other thing with Vimeo, I have to... Um, there's a 20 gigabyte a week limit. 
so I can only upload 20 gigabytes. Well, I've never exe- I've never come close to exceeding that yet. I'm just I'm too busy, frankly. Um, and I unfortunately, I would really like it if you could just take all of your videos <laughs> off of YouTube and put them into your Vimeo. Well, you can. I've looked it up, but it's so long winded, and I just thought. No, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Um, and I think Vimeo is much more about professional filmmaking than than YouTube, which is kind of YouTube's a little bit um, ground level. Do you know what I mean? I, 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 I'm perceiving that Vimeo is slightly more creative and a little bit more high end. I mean, I might be wrong. Let me know what you think. Um, so, yeah, if you've got... Music practices, jams, songwriting sessions. You know, you can record all that, upload it as a podcast, keep it private. You don't you don't need to go public with it. And they will turn it into a video file for you. And then it's stored there for free forever. Which I, th- I just think that's so cool for musicians because we... So often we're, you know, especially if you've got band practices and songwriting stuff and you've got your mates around in a bit of a jam and or you're you're practicing, you're playing along to stuff, you want to see how you improve. Private, so keep it all private. But you can do it on a podcast, you can get a free podcast and you can keep it all private on there, but you can still share it to YouTube while it's private. So, you know, you can do all these different things and it's the work's done for you and then the storage is there and there is no limit to the amount of um file you know heavyweight files that you that you have on youtube they will you know i mean i don't know how many gigabytes i must have on there but it it's a hefty old amount you know i mean it's probably not well obviously not as much as the bbc but you know it's um it's pretty good isn't it so i i'm not going to big them up in terms of their um it, you know their creative potential because i i don't think youtube is a place for for real creatives i just don't i think it's a place where um you know people want to go and get a cheap thrill it's a bit like mcdonald's like the mcdonald's isn't it of film fast not very good for you <laughs> and will make you fat if you get too much so you know I, I wouldn't uh, you know if I had kids that were living at home I I'd sort of veer them away from watching endless YouTube videos because I I mean YouTube funny enough my mother who's 80 loves YouTube but she started working in collage she's become a collage artist and, you know, she loves her crafts and stuff. So she, she goes on there a lot and it is good for that. But now that AI's got involved, I think it's plummeting because what's happening now is AI uh, is making the, the programming because it's cheap. It's much cheaper than human beings. And especially for the cookery programs where they just they just use condensed milk, more and more condensed milk. Every, every recipe I go in on has <laughs> condensed milk because they can say it's got no sugar in it. <laughs> it's just such a con um and of course ai makes these beautiful pictures of, of these lovely puddings and stuff um now i use ai in all my teaching tools but uh, you know the all the play along stuff so i'm uploading all of that now it's you can book a lesson with me if you want a real human but i have the technology and i have the wherewithal and um I'm a Suzuki teacher, so I know all about that. So I know what to put up and how you should go about it and the order to put things in. But if you're a musician and you want to learn an instrument, well, cello and piano, because that's all I can play, a bit of recorder, but I'm not going to start teaching recorder lessons now at this late stage of my career. Um, then the the Academy of Arts is, is probably the place to go or, you know, join the kids' programme, even if you're a grown-up. Because the Suzuki method is is sort of really great for adults too. And I don't t- talk like a baby or anything like that. The lessons are quite self-motivating, you know, that I'm generally not on them unless you book me privately. Okay, so there's, that was what I was just going to tell you, that it was a, YouTube's really good if you've got an RSS feed um, uh, for storage. Really good, cheap, free, etc., etc. So telltelaclub.com if you want to find out more.